everybody, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about menopause. So the first thing I want to point out is menopause is not an illness, it's not a disease, it's not an infection, nothing like that, okay? It's a naturally occurring thing that happens in your body. So the exact definition is one year, so 12 whole months, permanent cessation of menses. So you're not having a menstrual cycle for 12 months in a row. And the cause is decreased ovarian hormones. So this could be naturally occurring that happens with age, or some other things could put you into early menopause. An example, chemotherapy, radiation, things like that could put you into early menopause at a younger age if you're exposed to that. Perimenopause this is what we think of when we think of menopause. This is when you're having all of those uncomfortable symptoms. So perimenopause is the time before menopause and it usually lasts two to eight years. Think about that, eight years. The average time is about four years. So this is when your estrogen and your progesterone are uneven, they're kind of all over the place. Sometimes they increase, sometimes they decrease. It's not evenly distributed like it is when you're younger. And then your ovulation is sporadic. Sometimes you ovulate, sometimes you don't. So this happens for several years prior to it becoming real menopause. And this is when we have all of those symptoms that you think of. And then post-menopause, so ovarian estrogen stops, it's done. Ovulation, it's not sporadic anymore, it's all done, no more ovulation. And then where does our estrogen come from? It's not like our body has zero estrogen. Now it comes from our adrenal glands. So you have less estrogen because it's not being produced here. It's only being produced by the adrenal glands, but you still have some. So what's happening in perimenopause? That lack of ovulation or that inconsistent ovulation is decreasing the progesterone in your body. And if you remember, progesterone is that hormone that maintains our endometrium, which is our uterine lining. So if it's kind of irregular and all over the place, your menstruation is going to be irregular and all over the place. And sometimes what happens with this is you won't have a period in a couple of months and then you'll get one and it'll last a long time and it'll be heavier because you have to get rid of that endometrial lining. Decreases in estrogen can cause lots of things, um, skin things. So your skin and mucous membranes become dry. There's a decrease in skin elasticity. And then a decrease in vaginal flora. We have that normal protective flora, right, to maintain a good pH to help prevent us from getting infections. That has decreased, which makes um, menopausal women more susceptible to things like a UTI. Okay, because you don't have as much of that protective barrier that you had before. And then one random thing I wanted to point out, just so we're totally clear, you can still get pregnant during perimenopause. So those two to eight years prior to menopause, when you're having these kind of irregular periods and things like that, you are still capable of getting pregnant during this time. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms. When it comes to signs and symptoms, we have a little memory tool, and that is Havocs. So think it wreaks havoc on your body, okay? So the H is for hot flashes. I would think that's what most people associate with menopause, right? When you hear menopause, you think hot flashes. And your body temperature does actually increase when you're having a hot flash. So it's not just a sensation, you actually are having an increase in your temperature. The other H is for hair loss. Because of the increased androgens in your body, you have brittle hair, thinner hair, and even hair loss. A is for atrophy of the vagina. So that decreased estrogen causes that decrease in um, elasticity and it causes the dryness, right, in the skin and mucous membranes, which can lead to atrophy of the vagina, which can lead to things like painful intercourse. V is for vaginal secretions have decreased and vaginal pH increases as a result of this, making you more susceptible to infections. O is for osteoporosis. 
I have a whole video on osteoporosis and I talk about why being menopausal and having that decreased estrogen in your body is a risk factor for developing osteoporosis. So if you want to check that out, I'll put that in the description box. C is for coronary artery disease. I want to make it clear, menopause does not cause coronary artery disease. But if you already have other risk factors, if you have high cholesterol, if you have hypertension, which is a high blood pressure already, during menopause, your risk increases. And then finally, S is for sleep disturbances, things like night sweats. So hot flashes and night sweats are the most commonly associated symptoms. So sleep disturbances are night sweats. Now let's talk about treatment. And again, I want to emphasize that this is not a disease. We're not trying to cure it. We're not trying to stop it from happening, right? This is a naturally occurring life cycle thing for a woman's body. The treatment is focusing on those symptoms because those symptoms are uncomfortable. So we're trying to make them more comfortable. That's the point of treatment here, not curative. So the gold standard of treatment is hormone therapy. So if you have a uterus, they'll probably give you estrogen and progestin. If you've had a hysterectomy, they will likely only give you the estrogen. This might be some news to a lot of people. There is kind of a myth that, oh, if you have a hysterectomy, then you will not go through menopause. No, your body will still go through menopause, even after you've had a hysterectomy. There are estrogen-containing creams and suppositories. These are really helpful for people who have vaginal dryness or pain during intercourse. We can encourage them to do good Kegel exercises, to increase their fluid intake, to avoid spicy foods, caffeine and alcohol. These are all related to having good like bladder tone so they don't develop other issues like urinary incontinence or leakage. Wearing layers, right? When you're having those hot flashes, something you could take off real quick and put back on when the hot flash is over. Weight bearing exercise and vitamin D and calcium supplementation to prevent osteoporosis. And then if hormones are not an option for your patient or they don't want them, non-hormonal options include things like SSRIs and gabapentin. And then finally, the last thing, try to get them to relax. Decrease your stress because the more stressed out you are, those vasomotor symptoms, those like hot flashes and night sweats and all of that is going to be exaggerated. It's going to feel so much worse. So trying to get them to relax and decrease their stress. So that was my video about menopause. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.